hello my name is Duncan and welcome to Back Books and as I said in my previous video this is season two of Back Books because I've decided to call it a season because I had a bit of a break and this is the first tag of that season I've got a little snorting Labrador down by me hey gorgeous girl and I have a notebook in front of me and this is the mid-year book freak out tag that everybody seems to be doing nobody's tagged me in it because hey I have no friends but yeah and I thought I'd do it because I thought it was quite an interesting tag so, snorty girl there. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, why don't you just settle down? <coughs> but yes, so a mid, mid year book freak out. I don't know why you'd freak out. So, the question one I think there's how many questions in my book here? Yeah, about 10 of them. Yeah, there seems to be ten of them, I think. Check that it's not at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Question number one. Hopefully I'll put a little cup out there while I'm just faffing there. The best book I've read so far this year. And that's... Uh, the one I've really enjoyed the most was Ray Bradbury's Now and Forever, which is two novellas. Uh, one, Somewhere a Band is Playing, so I just had to look down because I couldn't remember the title. And the other one was Leviathan 99. The Five and Ninety Nine is like a retelling of Moby Dick in Space, but somewhere the band is playing. I absolutely loved, and that was the, probably one of the best things I've read this year. I did a little talk about it, and I will put a link to that at the back of this video. So we will get on now to question two. The best sequel you've read so far this year? I've not actually read that many sequels. So I will go for Dragonfall 5 and the Space Hijackers, which was a children's book I managed to pick up finally because I read them when I was really, really young. And I read it and I really enjoyed it. And yes, it's a Dragonfall 5 book by um, Brian Earnshaw. And they're really hard to get hold of now. But I said I read them when I was probably about six years old originally. And they're great. And... Question three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. Uh, I would go, I'm not big on new releases. I never know what's going on. As a lot of stuff I read do is science fiction. I'm not really, most new science fiction I don't really get on with. I don't think it's that good. But that's just my personal opinion. But I picked up the other week, I showed this in another video. Tom Hanks, who I didn't realise had written this novel. And I love films. I love Tom Hanks. Who doesn't love Tom Hanks? And... I'm quite interested to read this book. It's called The Making of Another Motion Picture Masterpiece. And it's had good reviews because I had a quick look around afterwards and I just randomly brought it and it's not the sort of thing I would normally buy. So I'm actually quite looking forward to reading that and I don't know when I'm going to get to that, but hopefully in the next six weeks or so, but I've got a few things else I wanted to read. And next one is the most anticipated release for the second part of the year. As I said, I don't really go on for new releases and most anticipated release because I don't really know what's going on. But bizarrely, there is one which is Harry Turtle Doves Three Miles Down, which I'm waiting for the paperback release, which it may have actually come out now, but I was waiting for it. And I've not read Harry Turtle Dove for a long time, actually, and he's the master of alternate histories. And this one is set in the 1970s. Uh, if aliens land and they have first contact in the 1970s and it sounded really interesting uh, I was looking on the writer David Gerald's his Facebook page and he was actually um, recommending it as well so I thought oh, maybe I should go back and read some Turtle Dove so yeah I'm actually quite looking forward to that so next question question five I think yeah my biggest disappointment of the year that I would say is Casino Royale by Ian Fleming. Don't think I've ever read any actual Ian Fleming Bond books. I, bizarrely, I've read, they did a couple of novelizations of, I think, Diamonds Are Forever and maybe The Spy Who Loved Me in the 1970s. I remember reading those, but I've never read any Ian Fleming, actual Ian Fleming uh, Bond. So I managed to find Casino Royale locally. It was just in a, sh a second-hand shop and I picked it up and I read it. And I just was a bit disappointed in it. It was just a bit, uh, yeah, um, I can get over the racism and the sexism. That's 
expected for that era. It was just plot wise and prose wise, it just didn't do much for me. I do have a bunch of, if you saw any in one of my older videos, I picked up a bunch of other Bond books locally. Uh, I think there's about five or six of them with gorgeous 70s covers with weird women draped over a gun. <laughs> it's really strange. And I am going to get on to start reading those. I'm hoping that they get better because it wasn't terrible. It just was a bit dull, really. But yeah, I know some people love them, but didn't really get on with it that much. Uh, question six. The biggest surprise. I'd say the short story God is an Iron by Spider Robinson. Not actually read any Spider Robinson before this. And I got, I've got old Omni magazines and I was reading one and somebody had written a letter in complaining that they'd featured God is an Iron the month before because it was blasphemous or something. And so I went in search of the story and I read it and it is a grim, grim story. It starts off, but the ending really makes up for it and it's really... I, yeah, I really, really liked it and really rated it. I've now picked up a couple more Spider Robinson books. His uh, Telempath, which was his first book, and Mind Hunter, which includes what was God is an Iron because he used that to expand it into a novel. So I'm going to get around to reading those soon. But yes, that was probably my biggest surprise. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. And actually, even when I was about halfway through reading the short story, I was still in sort of two minds about it, but the ending pulled it together and it is really, really good. Uh, Favourite new author, author? I would say after that is Spider Robinson. Just, I know I've only read one thing by him, but that impressed me. Uh, next questions are a bit weird questions. Newest fictional crush? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm answering that because that's just a weird question. Uh, newest favourite character? Well, I don't really have favourite characters. They probably work in the book, so forget that. Book that made you cry, or your saddest book? Uh, that would be Nigel by Monty Don, which is a book about, by the gardener uh, Monty Don, about his dog Nigel, his golden retriever, but it actually goes through his history with dogs. And as with any story about dogs, because sadly dogs have a lot shorter lives than ours, sadly they lose some dogs, and I'm a sucker for that, and yes, it made me cry. Uh, book that made you happy? I'd say the same book, Nigel by Monty Don. I did really, really enjoy it. It was, but yeah, I like reading about dogs, what's not to love, especially golden retrievers. And I think also the reason it probably made me cry a bit more than normal is because sadly we lost our golden retriever Harley last year. And actually today is his birthday, July the 1st. He would have been 17 if he'd still been with us. So yes, oh, I miss the poor boy every day. Okay, favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year? Um, this is a bit of a cheat, okay? I'm going to go Life of Pi because I saw the National Theatre's uh, presentation of the Life of Pi, which was broadcast to our cinema, and it was a stage adaptation of it, and it was wondrous. It was absolutely wondrous, and if you ever get a chance to see it, see it, because I absolutely adored it, and it's quite different to the actual film because I've seen the film of Life of Pi as well. Uh, but yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. But yes, that's my favourite one of those. Favourite video we've done this year. I'm going to go back to Now and Forever by uh, Ray Bradbury, just because I really enjoyed doing the video and my lovely wife did some, read some passages out for me and I just had fun putting it together. And that's my whole thing about doing these videos. I do them if they're fun because I'm not here, I'm not sponsored by anybody, I don't make money off them, I don't want to make money off them. I just sit here and hope that people watch me and hope people enjoy what I do. Most beautiful book you've received this year? Um, I don't really go for beautiful books. Uh, the Tom Hanks one's quite pretty. I don't know if it's the most beautiful book I've received this year. But I quite like it. The funny beak was R2-D2 in the background. And then the final question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, I don't need to read anything because I just do what I want and read what I want. So there's no desperate things. There's a few that I want to read. I've got a couple of books coming up for um, Michael Romeo's um, Let's Read Some of Our White Whale books <laughs> before the end of the year. So I am just about to start uh, Don Quixote and I told myself I was going to also read uh, ben, uh, Bill Bryson's 
history of nearly everything. But I haven't got to finish them. But yeah, I'm hoping to do those. But I just read what I want. And I frequently, if you know, change my mind about what I'm reading. I just sort of pick up a book and then maybe go and pick up a different book. So yeah, so that was the mid-year freakout book tag. And as everybody seems to have done it and what have you, I am not going to tag anybody. But I will, if you haven't done it and you want to do it, do it. And I will speak to you all very soon.